ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we mark this very special occasion in prayer. Gracious and merciful Lord, you are the giver of life, the igniter of faith, provider of hope, and the author of love. Mighty one, O ancient of days, you have commanded us to be strong and courageous in life or in death because you are always with us. Receive your servant's most humble prayer as we gather today to honor and celebrate three selfless exemplars of unquestioned commitment and courageous valor. Father, we are thankful for Master Sergeant Earl Plumley, Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash, and Sergeant First Class Christopher Sleese, who embody the sacrificial willingness to lay down one's life for their friends. Each of these men took heroic actions in the face of fear and certain death. Lord, you gave our nation and army the heart of a special forces warrior to free the oppressed, the soul of a dog-faced soldier with a can-do attitude and the fighting spirit of a ranger to lead the way. When our nation asked who will go, each of these men declared, here I am, send me. Faith, hope, and love propelled these men to display the compassion, care, and commitment necessary to throw themselves into the fray to save others. As a grateful nation, help us today as we bestow its highest honor on these men of valor who distinguished themselves at the risk of their own lives above and beyond the call of duty. Bless those that we honor today and I thank you for the many family members, comrades in arms, and dear friends who are here with us today and others in spirit to support them. May the actions of these men in the crucible of combat inspire others to personal courage and selfless service. Keep the lamp of liberty shining forth brightly across our nation and let us always serve as a beacon of hope for a freedom-loving people. It is in your holy, majestic, and magnificent name that I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. And welcome to the East Room of the White House, decorated for the holiday season, <clears throat> and uh, to celebrate the gift of gratitude. It's an appropriate backdrop for this ceremony, we believe, because our hearts are overflowing with gratitude today as we honor the unparalleled courage and commitment to duty and the indispensable, indisputable gallantry. And in you know, I, I, it's just hard to explain where your soldiers got the courage they got. The late Sergeant First Class, Alwyn Cash. Late Sergeant First Class, Christopher Salise. Master Sergeant Earl Plumley. Plumley. In our nation's newest recipients of our highest military award, the Medal of Honor, I want to thank all of our distinguished guests that are here today, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, the, the sec Secretary of the, uh, of the uh, uh, se Secretary Austin, the Enlisted Advisor, Chairman Colin Lopez, and the leaders of the United States Army, and the Vice President of the United States, and the Second Gentleman, and uh, I'm Jill's husband. Jill is here. <laughs> As we add these three names to our nation's roll of honor, I also want to recognize previous Medal of Honor recipients who are here today to honor their brothers in arms. Matthew Williams. Matthew, stand up so people can see you. <laughs> Thomas Payne. to stare down danger and summon the strength in the moment of trial. We're grateful for all that you three have done, so many more. And the family of Sergeant First Class Alwyn Chase uh, has, uh, has been 16 years, this has been 16 years in coming. 
Representative Murphy, Representative Walz, thank you for your efforts, the continued efforts, along with the team, Sergeant uh, Cash, his commanders, commander in arms, his medical team, and uh, the family, who worked with such dedication over so many years to make this recognition possible. October 17th, 2005, Sergeant uh, Cash was uh, commanding a Bradley fighting vehicle a night patrol in Iraq. They came under enemy fire. An improvised explosive device detonated, igniting the vehicle's fuel and engulfing it in flames. The sergeant extracted himself and, without hesitation, turned back to the vehicle to help free the driver and extinguish flames on the driver. In the process, Sergeant First Class Cash uniform, drenched in fuel, caught fire, causing severe burns. Patrol was still taking enemy fire, but Cash thought only of his fellow soldiers trapped in the troop compartment. So he pushed his own pain aside to return to the burning vehicle as his, and pulled four soldiers free, four more. At this point, with the second and third degree burns covering almost 75% of his body, his uniform mostly, mostly burned away, the sergeant saw there were still two soldiers and their interpreter unaccounted for. So he went back into the inferno for a third time and got everyone out of that inferno. That was his code. His love for his 3rd Infantry Division ran deep. No soldier was going to left, be left behind on his watch. And when helicopters began to arrive, he insisted that his troops be evacuated before he would go. Later, at Brook Army Medical Center in Texas, where he and other members of his team were taken for treatment. When he regained the ability to speak, his first thoughts were for his units. He asked, first thing, how are my boys? How are my boys? Alwyn Cash was a soldier's soldier, a warrior who literally walked through fire for his troops. Sergeant succumbed to his injuries on in November 8, 2005 surrounded by those he loved and loved him. He was a hero. He was a beloved son and brother, a proud husband and a father of three children. Sergeant Cash and his family gave everything for our country. Their devotion to his memory, <clears throat> their years working to make sure that his courage and selflessness were properly documented and honored is a testament to the love he inspired and the legacy he left behind. Sergeant First Class Cash is now the seventh individual to receive a Medal of Honor for his actions in Operation Iraqi Freedom and the first African American to receive it since the Vietnam War. And Tamara, Alexis, Casanel, I'm so honored to award your husband, your dad, your brother, the recognition that he earned. I know it's tough. As honored as you are, it's got to be tough to be here today. He'll be remembered. He'll be remembered forever. Sergeant First Class Christopher Solis was an Army Ranger through and through with 175. The Rangers lead the way. On July 12th, 2018, nearing the end of the fifth deployment, the fifth deployment, Sergeant Salise was leading an operation in the Patika province of Afghanistan. Not a very friendly place to clear the area of enemy forces. Attacked and pinned down by a large force, the sergeant exposed himself to the enemy fire in order to retrieve a heavy weapon system that allowed his team to fight back and reach the secure location. <clears throat> During the firefight, a member of his team was critically wounded as they called for medical evacuation. But as the rescue helicopter arrived and began taking fire as well, the sergeant knew it was time was critical to get his wounded teammate loaded and treated. So he once again, knowingly and willingly, stepped into the enemy's crosshairs. Sergeant Solis used his body as a shield for the aircraft and his crew against the heavy incoming fire. The helicopter began to take off, and he put himself directly between the cockpit and the enemy, ensuring the aircraft could depart and sustaining what would prove to be a mortal wound. He knew he was hit, 
but he waited for the air crew to depart without him. In the face of extreme danger, he placed the safety of his team and his crew above his own. I can offer no better encapsulation than the words of the U.S. Army ambulance pilot in command that day. He said, quote, courage to me is putting your life on the line to save the life of another, as demonstrated by Sergeant First Class Chris Salis, who died protecting my crew, end of quote. Christopher Salis was courage made flesh. Today, we add his name to the elite vanguard of American warriors who generation after generation have strengthened and inspired our nation with their unwavering bravery and service. His legacy lives on in the lives he saved, the teammates he mentored, and the memories he made with his beloved wife, Katie, and especially in their precious daughter, Shannon. Thank you for sharing your dad with our country, Shannon. We'll never forget the debt that we owe you and your whole family. August 28, 2013, then Staff Sergeant Earl Pumley was snapping a quick photo with members of his unit at Forward Operation Base Ghazni in Afghanistan. Then insurgents, turned out, detonated a 400-pound car bomb that blew open a 60-foot-wide breach in the perimeter wall. Staff Sergeant Pumley and members of his special operations team immediately hopped in the nearby truck and raced toward the blast to defend the base. When they arrived, they encountered insurgents coming through the wall, all wearing explosive vests. Our troops started taking rocket fire, recordless rifle fire, and small arms fire, while the driver of their truck maneuvered into the line of enemy fire to shield injured members of their team outside the vehicle, the staff sergeant exited the vehicle and used his own body to shield the driver. He left whatever cover the truck provided him and began to engage the invaders. Outnumbered with no regard for his own safety, at times armed with only a pistol, Staff Sergeant Plumley attacked the insurgent forces, taking them on one by one. And time and again, bullets flew by, sometimes only inches away. And time and again, Staff Sergeant Plumley closed with the enemy. And multiple occasions during the fight, the insurgents detonated their vest right in front of Plumley, at one point hurling him into a wall and injuring his back. When a fellow soldier was severely wounded, Plumley immediately ran to the soldier's position, carried him to safety, and administered tactical combat casualty care before returning to the fight. Ultimately, Staff Sergeant Plumley was able to organize three Polish soldiers to mount an effective defense of the base, clear the area, and regain the security po posture. His heroic actions in the battlefield leadership gained the recognition of some of our highest military commanders, including a man who knows a little bit about battles. Our, our chairman of our Joint Chiefs, General Milley, and General McConville, who are here today, who are here today to honor him as well. They saw extraordinary bravery when then Staff Sergeant Plumley did, and they understood the worst outcome he prevented from taking place. They understood what would have happened had he not done what he did. Now, Master Sergeant Plumley has this recognition has been too long in coming delayed for you and your family as well. And no one, no one will ever forget how you sprang into action when, our, when the enemy attacked our base. I'm grateful for your continued service and dedication to the country. And that goes for your wife, Terry, and your children, Lillian and Lincoln, as well. Because it's not just the person who wears the uniform who serves. It's the whole family who serves, the sleepless nights, the missed holidays, the empty chairs, the celebrations, the way you give back to your community. The English poet John Milton once wrote, they also serve who only stand and wait. They also serve who only stand and wait. While today we honor three outstanding soldiers whose actions embody the highest ideals of selfless service, we also remember the high price 
our military members and their families are willing to pay on behalf of our nation. We remember the strength and the sacrifices of these military families, caregivers and survivors. And we remember and renew our sacred obligation to those who serve this nation in uniform. As a nation, we have many obligations to our children, the elderly, those in need, but we have only one truly sacred obligation, sacred obligation. That's to properly prepare and equip those troops we send into harm's way, care for them and their families, both while they are deployed and when they return. That commitment never expires. And as commander in chief, I promise it's a commitment that we will keep. So God bless you all. And may God protect the troops who are out there right now. And now it's my great honor to ask for the citations to be read and award the Medal of Honor to Sergeant First Class Alwyn Chase, Sergeant First Class Christopher Sleaze, and Master Sergeant Earl Pumley. Will the Cash family please join the president on stage? Attention orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has possibly awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Sergeant First Class Alwyn C. Cash, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant First Class Alwyn C. Cash distinguished himself by acts of gallantry above and beyond the call of duty while serving as platoon sergeant with Company A, 1st Battalion, 15th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Brigade, 3rd Infantry Division, in Saladin Province, Iraq, on October 17, 2005. While on a nighttime mounted patrol near an enemy-laden village, the Bradley fighting vehicle, which Sergeant First Class Cash was commanding, was attacked by enemy small arms fire and an improvised explosive device, which disabled the vehicle and engulfed it in flames. After extracting himself from the vehicle, Sergeant First Class Cash set about extracting the driver, who was tracked in the vehicle. After opening the driver's hatch, Sergeant First Class Cash and a fellow soldier extracted the driver, who was gulped in the flames. During the course of extinguishing the flames on the driver and extracting him from the vehicle, Sergeant First Class Cash's fuel soaked his uniform, igniting and causing severe burns to his body. Ignoring his painful wounds, Sergeant First Class Cash then moved to the rear of the vehicle to continue in aiding his fellow soldiers who were trapped in the troop compartment. At this time, the enemy noted his movements and began to direct their fire on his position. When another element of the company engaged the enemy, Sergeant First Class Cash seized the opportunity and moved into the open troop door and aided four of his soldiers in escaping the burning vehicle. Having extracted the four soldiers, Sergeant First Class Cash noticed two other soldiers had not been accounted for, and again, he entered the building to retrieve them. At this time, reinforcements arrived to further suppress the enemy and establish a casualty collection point. Despite the severe second and third degree burns covering the majority of his body, Sergeant First Class Cash persevered through the pain to encourage his, his fellow soldiers and ensure they received needed medical care. When medical evacuation helicopters began to arrive, Sergeant First Class Cash selfishly refused evacuation until all of the other wounded soldiers were evacuated first. Sergeant First Class Cash's extraordinary heroism and selfishness above and beyond the call of duty were in keeping with the highest traditions of the military, service, and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, the President of the United States. Will the Salise family please accompany the president? <clears throat> Attention orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress March 3rd, 1863, has possibly awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Sergeant First Class Christopher A. Salise, United States Army. 
for conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty. Sergeant First Class Christopher A. Solis distinguished himself by conspicuous gallantry above and beyond the call of duty while engaged with the enemy in Pakia Province, Afghanistan on July 12, 2018. As a leader of a special purpose unit comprised of partner forces and members of the 1st Battalion, 75th Re Ranger Regiment, Sergeant First Class Solis led an operation to clear an area of enemy forces and thereby disrupt future attacks against the government of Afghanistan and allied forces. Shortly after his team reached their final objectives, a large enemy force attacked, placed effective fire on him and his team, preventing them from maneuvering to counterattack. Realizing the danger the attack posed to his team in the operation, Sergeant First Class Solis voluntary ex voluntarily exposed himself to intense enemy machine gun and small arms fire to retrieve and deploy a heavy weapon system, thereby allowing U.S. and partner forces to regain the initiative, maneuver to a secure location, and begin treatment of a critically wounded partner force member. As a medical evacuation helicopter arrived, it was immediately engaged by accurate and sustained enemy fire. Knowing how critical it was to quickly load the casualty, Sergeant First Class Solis willingly exposed himself to heavy enemy fire to direct and lead the evacuation. As the casualty moved from a position of cover and out into intense enemy fire, Sergeant First Class Solis made a conscious effort to ensure his body acted as a physical shield to his team carrying the casualty and the crew of the aircraft. As the casualty was loaded and Sergeant First Class Solis' team returned to cover, he alone remained at the aircraft returning a high volume of fire and constantly repositioning himself to act as a physical shield to the aircraft and its crew. With his final reposition, Sergeant First Class Solis placed himself directly between the cockpit and the enemy, ensuring the aircraft was able to part. As the helicopter lifted off, Sergeant First Class Solis was hit by enemy fire. Fully aware of his own injury, but understanding the peril to the aircraft from the intense enemy machine gun fire, Sergeant First Class Solis motioned to the aircraft to depart rather than to remain behind to load him. His selfless actions saved the life of the evacuated partner force member and almost certainly prevented further casualties among other members of his team and the air crew. Throughout the entire engagement, Sergeant First Class Solis significantly changed the course of battle by repeatedly placing himself in extreme danger to protect his team, defeat the enemy, and it ultimately cost him his life. Sergeant First Class Solis' extraordinary heroism and selfless above and beyond the call of duty were in keeping with the highest traditions of military surface, service and reflect great credit upon himself, his unit, and the United States Army. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, the President of the United States. Master Plumley, will you please accompany the president? <clears throat> Attention orders. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, March 3rd, 1863, has possibly awarded in the name of Congress the Medal of Honor to Staff Sergeant Earl D. Plumley, United States Army, for conspicuous gallantry at the risk of his life and above and beyond the call of duty. Staff Sergeant Earl D. Plumley distinguished himself by acts of gallantry above and beyond the call of duty on August 28, 2013, while serving as a weapons sergeant, C Company, 4th Battalion, 1st Special Forces Group Airborne, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Sergeant Plumley instantly responded to an enemy attack on Forward Operating Base Ghazni, Ghazni Province, Afghanistan, that began with an explosion that tore a 60-foot breach in the base, base's perimeter wall. Ten insurgents wearing Afghan National Army uniforms and suicide vests poured through the breach. Sergeant Plumley and five others mounted two vehicles and raced towards the explosion. When his vehicle was engaged by enemy fire, Sergeant Plumley reacted instinctively, using his body to shield the driver prior to exiting the vehicle and engaging an enemy insurgent 15 meters to the vehicle's right with his pistol. Without cover and complete disregard for his own safety, he advanced on the enemy, engaging multiple insurgents with only his pistol. Upon reaching cover, he killed two insurgents, one with a grenade, and the other by detonating the insurgent's suicide vest using precision sniper fire. Again, 
Disregarding his own safety, Sergeant Plumlee advanced alone against the enemy, engaging several insurgents at close range, including one whose suicide vest exploded a mere seven meters from his position. Under intense enemy fire, Sergeant Plumlee temporarily withdrew to cover, where he joined up with another soldier, and together they mounted another counterattack. Under fierce enemy fire, Sergeant Plumlee again moved from cover and attacked the enemy forces, advancing with seven meters of a previously wounded insurgent who detonated his suicide vest, blowing Sergeant Plumlee back against a nearby wall. Sergeant Plumlee, ignoring his injuries, quickly regained his faculties and re-engaged re -engaged the enemy forces. Intense enemy fire once again forced the two soldiers to temporarily withdraw. Undeterred, Sergeant Plumlee joined a small group of American Polish soldiers who moved from cover to once again counterattack the infiltrators. As the force advanced, Sergeant Plumlee engaged an insurgent to his front left. He then swung around and engaged another insurgent who charged the group from the rear. The insurgent detonated his suicide vest, morally wounding a U.S. soldier. Sergeant Plumlee, again, without complete disregard for his own safety, ran to the wounded soldier, carried him to safety, and rendered first aid. He then methodically cleared the area, remained in a security posture, and continued to scan for any remaining threats. Staff Sergeant Earl D. Plumlee's extraordinary heroism and devotion to duty are keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the Special Forces Regiment, and the United States Army. Signed. Joseph R. Biden, the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as we conclude this ceremony in prayer. Most holy God, as we leave this ceremony, inspire us and lead us to greater acts of service. May we have the audacity to follow the examples of the warriors we honored here today. Bless Master Sergeant Plumley, the Cash and Salise families, as the names of these men are etched into our nation's proud history. May their leadership and legacies mark the truest north for us to seek. And may we all strive to be strong and courageous in the face of challenges that life may bring. Finally, we pray that you will give our leaders wisdom as they serve our nation and our Army's people, and that you will bless and protect the men and women of our armed forces as they preserve those precious freedoms. I ask these things in your most gracious and holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats as the President and First Lady and Vice President and Second Gentleman depart. 